Welcome back. This is Chapter 28A, Part 4, Placentation. Placentation is the formation of the placenta, a temporary organ that originates from both the embryonic and maternal tissues. The embryonic portion of a placenta includes the inner cell mass. This gives rise to the layer of extraembryonic mesoderm that lines the inner surface of the tropoplast. Together, these structures form the chorion that then develops finger-like projections called chorionic villi. This picture here shows the implantation, the implanting of a seven and a half day old blastocyst. The syncytial trophoblast is eroding the endometrium. The cells of the embryonic disc are now separated from the amnion by a fluid filled space. The chorionic villi are then invaded by new blood vessels. These extend to the embryo as umbilical arteries and veins. The continuation of the erosion of the endometrium produces a large blood-filled lacuna, or intervillous spaces, in the stratum functionalis. The villi lie in the intervillous spaces, totally immersed in maternal blood. Figure 28.6 shows the events of placentation, early embryonic development, and extraembryonic membrane formation. Here we see again the implanting of the seven and a half day old blastocyst. The syncytial tropoblast is eating away or eroding the endometrium. The cells of the embryonic disc, these over here, are now separated from the amnion by a fluid filled space. Okay, so here is the amniotic cavity. At 12 day old, the blastocyst. Um, is now completely implanted. The extraembryonic mesoderm is forming a discrete layer beneath the cytotropoblast. So here we have, let me get this cursor. Here's the cytotropoblast here. Right below it, we're starting to have this um, amnion formed. We have the amniotic cavity, and then we have this embryonic disc, which has two layers, the epiblast and the hypoblast. The hypoblast is the yellow, and then the epiblast is the, the blue part here. This here is the yolk sac. This is the extra embryonic mesoderm, and the chorion is being formed here. Okay. If we look at a 16-day-old embryo, the cytotrophoblast and associated mesoderm have become the chorion, and the chorionic villi are elaborating. The embryo exhibits all three germ layers, a yolk sac and an elantoid, which forms the basis of the umbilical cord. So here we can see the primary germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. The ectoderm is here, this blue layer. The mesoderm is the pink layer in between, and the yellow layer is the endoderm. It forms the top part of this yolk sac and the elantois is here. The forming um, umbilical cord is just beyond that. The extra embryonic coelom is this area here, and this is the extra embryonic mesoderm right here. Okay. The chorion is this whole area right here. Okay. And then the chorionic villus is this area that's protruding into um, the, um, uh, the uterine walls. This lacuna is um, a space that is filled with maternal blood. That's where we're going to have the delivery of the nutrients and oxygen, etc., through these areas eventually. The maternal portion of the placenta includes the decidua basalis and the decidua capsularis. The decidua basalis is the stratum functionalis of the endometrium located between the chorionic villi and the stratum basalis of the endometrium. The decidua capsularis is the part of the endometrium at the uterine cavity face of the implanted embryo. This portion of the placenta expands to accommodate the growing fetus. The villi in the decidua capsularis degenerate as the fetus grows, while the villi in the decidua basalis increase in number and branches. Together, the chorionic villi and the decidua capsularis make up the placenta. 
So this is a four and a half week old embryo. This here um, is the decidua basalis. So if this was like the lumen of the uterus, the egg had come down, or the fertilized egg came here and implanted here. The side that is closer to, or deeper, I guess would be a good way to put it, deeper in the wall of the uterus is considered the decidua basalis. The decidua capsularis is the side that is closest to the lumen of the uterus. Now if you'll see, there are chorionic villi poking in both areas, completely surrounding this embryo. However, these chorionic villi are getting smaller and these are getting bigger. So that's kind of how this um, is situated. So we still have the chorion, which is right here, that's like um, the outside of this whole thing, that is containing the extriomic coelom. Then we have the amnion, which is this blue outside uh, capsule or um, area. The light blue is the amniotic cavity. Here we have the umbilical blood vessels in the umbilical cord. Okay. And this here is the yolk sac, this yellowish thing. All in here, these areas, that just shows maternal blood is filling these spaces. Okay. Here we see a 13 week old fetus and it's become much more developed. So this would have been, say that, um, say if the implantation occurred here and then it started growing 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 until this embryo has taken up or this fetus has taken up almost the entire uterus so this side um, further away from the implantation is the decidua capsularis remember that this is the side that is going to continue to grow this is the part of the um, placenta that will continue to grow as the baby grows on this side we have the placenta as well with the decidua basalis um, deeper. The chorionic villi are seen here and then the maternal blood filled areas are shown with the blood. The amnion is the dark blue still, the amniotic cavity is the light blue. The umbilical cord is very well developed at this point. The placenta is fully formed and functional by the age of or by the end of month three. It provides nutritive respiratory, excretory, and endocrine functions. The maternal and, and embryonic blood supplies normally do not intermix. The embryonic placental barriers include the membranes of the chorionic villi and the endothelium of the embryonic capillaries. This figure, um, 28.7, details the anatomy of the, the vascular relationships in a mature decidua basalis. So here we can see how the fetus is oriented with the implantation on this side. So they have taken an area of this big and uh, zoomed in on it. So first we see the umbilical cord here. The umbilical cord is going to have the umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein. These are um, then going to go into what's a chorionic villi. <clears throat> this is the fetal portion of the placenta which is the chorion, okay? This is one of the chorionic villi here. Um, and you can see a fetal venule and an arterial make up this chorionic villi. This portion from here to here um, is going to be the non-fetal portion. The maternal portion of the placenta called the decidua basalis is here, okay? So it's like this, you know, it's all this pink area. The stratum basalis of the endometrium is here, and then the myometrium lies here. The maternal veins are shown here in blue, and the maternal arteries in red. Okay. Now, if you look, the maternal blood is going to come down here or come up this way and then enter this blood-filled space. It then can exit towards the, with a venule or the vein this way. Okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and then this side as well can exit that way. So you have all this blood coming in um, here. Now you have, these are the fetal veins and arteries. So the fetal vein, or I'm sorry, the fetal artery, let's start with that. That's gonna be the red one. Um, it's going to take blood from here, from the maternal side, and or take nutrients, oxygen, and it's going to pass into its blood. 
and then it can go towards the fetus. The fetal vein then comes this way and it can deliver all the stuff it doesn't want into this uh, maternal blood, which is then the maternal vein, okay? The same occurs in each one of these. So the, um, the blood that, or the nutrients, the oxygen that the fetus needs enters here and it follows in the fetal artery, or arterial, out to the fetus and then it, the blood supply returns back and can deliver all the wastes. If the placental hormones are inadequate for any reason, the pregnancy is aborted. Throughout pregnancy, blood levels of estrogens and progesterone increase. This prepares the mammary glands for lactation. The placenta also secretes human placental lactogen, human chorionic thyrotropin, and relaxin.